You're looking at the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 48 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of 10 and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news related to the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself and on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP, and is also available on iTunes by searching The Lowdown Show Brand War. So go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter and join the conversation by having your thoughts and questions read right here on the show by tweeting and following at No Holds Barred WP. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Hey yo, hey yo, and Greg says hey yo in the chat. Hello, Greg, listening live, like a good fan should. Big weekend. <laughs> Big weekend. Big weekend. Fortunately, well, for me, for you. myself and No Self Phil are going to WWE Live in Buffalo tomorrow night. Ooh, and you're going to see the return of Finn Balor. Sure. Are you are you got to be pumped for that, man. A I wanna, little bit. He doesn't come out as Demon Balor. I don't know. <laughs> Probably it, not. But you're going to like the first return. He might. Maybe. Or we get... It's, it's going to be a six-man tag between yeah, or Balor. Or Balor Club Balor, you know, with the jacket and the pop collar. Even then, I'd fucking mark out. I'd go nuts. I'm just wearing my Jericho stuff. I just want to see Chris Jericho one yeah. more time. And you borrowed our, our buddy Manny's U.S. title, so yeah, fitting. Sure with the Cascade Really sense. fitting. I and, wish it was uh, going. Unfortunately, I got a hockey tournament. Hockey's well, life, so. If I was going, <laughs> you know, we, we could do the best cosplay because I would just be uh, Kevin Owens. <laughs> That'd be great. And you could wear your IC championship. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, kind of makes sense. He was IC champion last year. <laughs> Whatever. And I could see my girl for the second time. Maybe, well, maybe she wins. I don't know. But hey, either, event. you never know. Either way, I just I just want to see the gift. Of, I just want the gift of Jericho one more time. That's you gotta all I care drink about. it in, man. I will be wearing that shirt. Thank you to Michael Chow. Yep. Um, what was I gonna say? Live events are really cool. They are. They they're definitely a different atmosphere. I feel like they they're get the, the wrestlers are given a lot more freedom in live events than you see on TV. They can interact with the fans more. Yeah, it, it's great. They should. I mean, if you look, you go to a live event. If you guys haven't out there. Um, what the wrestlers do after bo- after the match is all said and done, whether they're heel or face, doesn't matter. They all go around the entire ring and get clap everyone's hands. They go up the ramp, they go over to the side, like way far right to the stage. And the, the the wrestlers, you know, I give them props in the live events, man. They yeah. do a lot for the fans. You feel like you're more a part of it. Yeah. And and the wrestlers, like, there's fans waiting outside in the parking lot, which I think they do for real events too, but. Me and No Cell Phil the one time we were at a live event. I think it was Buffalo. It was. It was in Buffalo, go. and we are we are doing that. We were part of the the parking lot crowd, and it's crazy. You had people who were like Natty and Charlotte, who or no, Natty was a face and Charlotte was a heel, and Charlotte's like, guys, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm a heel, but she came out and like signed people's autographs and said hi to people. I'm like, gee, like this is awesome. And Natty signed every autograph, yeah. took every picture. And the funniest part was like, knew they didn't come out, but they 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 heard us like heckling them. And they were just like gyrating us. They're getting all their bags out of the car and just doing. It. They could hear us. <laughs> and, you know, I I can appreciate that. I know you're busy and stuff, but I, at least you do something, not just yeah. like the uh, what was it the Dudleys? It was the Dudleys and Eric Rowan and Luke Harper that just did nothing. They were like as if as if we weren't there. They just they got to acknowledge the fans, you know. Yeah. Come on, man, we're paying. Like we're paying fans here. Anyways, uh, some news here before we start the show. Me and myself, or myself, and Corporate Cappy are going to WrestleMania Woo-hoo. at our local theater. <laughs> <laughs> we are we bought tickets last night at our local theaters, our local theater, and it came to a pretty decent price because usually in the past they were like 30, 40 bucks for these tickets. For some reason, WrestleMania at our local theater is being shown for nineteen ninety five, no theater. tax. Great. Take so uh, I don't care. We both bought our tickets right away when we saw it last night. Yeah, hopefully next year when we're both working full time, we'll be able to go to WrestleMania. Yeah, we'll we're, we're we're thinking about it, guys. We're looking currently looking at hotels and stuff for New Orleans, hoping to do that. If we go, 
we're gonna do a lot of podcast related shit down there. It's gonna be fun. Um, so yeah, if we do, I think we plan on driving there. The whole plane thing it just, I feel like you could, if you worked it out right, it'd be cheaper if you drove there. If you worked out the gas pricing right, and if the person with the car is okay with it. Yeah, if you're willing you know. to sacrifice a night of sleep. Because you don't want to take the plane there and you have them to walk everywhere or rent a car. Because, you know, that's bad since we're Canadian. That'd be sh- really terrible luck if, heaven forbid, we get into a car accident and it's an American rental car. We'd, yeah. we'd, we'd be fucked. <laughs> uh, so, that's that. That's that. Uh, some more news before we start the show. Uh, guys, and speaking of WrestleMania, we're going to do a special all-day podcast on April 2nd. So the Saturday before, or no, April 1st, I think. Where's April 2nd? I don't know. The, the, Saturday. the Saturday before WrestleMania, we are doing an all-day podcast. I'm thinking right now between, it's going to be, it's going to run from like 10 a.m. to 5. That way it gives us time to, for me and Cappy to regroup after and able to go watch NXT. Um, so we'll do 10, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then we'll take a break at 1 for an hour and we'll come back from two to five o'clock and between the two to five o'clock is when we're going to do the skype calls i'm thinking and the 10 to one o'clock is where we're going to do basically what the lowdown show is but we're going to also include nxt as a recap yeah and getting and, hyped for yeah. nxt takeover and then we'll do the the cards for wrestlemania then we'll chat with you guys from two to five o'clock we'll chat about wrestling you guys call us with some questions whatever you want to talk about we'll talk about and i'm playing some contests for them too so stay stay uh, updated or stay put I uh, got some more news coming out for the lowdown in Orlando. I have it posted and pinned on our Twitter at No Holds Bar WP. So go check it out. Uh, I did a really good job on that. I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> you did. It is really good. Um, so yeah, go check that out, guys, and stay tuned for some more news on the lowdown in Orlando. Um, our buddy Casey actually thought we were going to WrestleMania, and I understand you, it's <laughs> the confusion there, but we're not. Uh, Michael Chow TV. If you guys don't know, Michael Chow, our 2016 No Holds Bar Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year. Uh, has now started his own podcast, and it's called Michael Chow TV. So go check it out on Spreaker. Uh, if you guys need to uh, a better link to get there, just go to our Spreaker profile and click who we follow. And it's the it basically the last person that I click for. I don't follow a lot of people on Spreaker, so all you have to do is go to our followers and you can see, or check out our followers. And he's up there. Um, his debut episode, debut episode zero, is basically like an overview of what his podcast is going to be about. He's not just doing wrestling; he's doing some other stuff of his interests, like comic books. Um, he's doing the show. I think he's doing reviews of the show Arrow for all you Arrowverse people out there. And I liked it. I, I really, really enjoyed his debut episode. He gave a shout-out to us. Love the shout-out, Michael Chow, as we're giving your shout-out right now for your show. So go check it out, guys. Michael Chow TV. Follow him on Twitter. Guy's very, very knowledgeable in the sport of wrestling, and I bet you he's knowledgeable in all the other stuff. I can't wait for more episodes of his podcast. It's eventually going to go into a YouTube channel by the end of the summer, he said, so I'm really excited for that. So good things coming from Michael Chow. So let's move on from that. And the last bit of news is what we do every week. And if you win Twitter Fan of the Year or of the month, you get a shout out. Shout out to Glorious Greg at Gillies. At, I think Gillies X929 on Twitter. He's a shout out. He won our February Twitter Fan of the Month, and he'll get his tweets read first here on the podcast. So shout out to you, Greg, listening in the chat right now. Um, <laughs> his first episode was awesome. Yes, it was, Greg. Uh, so in saying that, that's going to wrap it up for the notes before the show. And let's get into your tweets out there. And there's a lot of good tweets this week. A lot of tweets, a lot of good ones. Uh, I definitely enjoy some of them. And you guys definitely didn't ease up on the roars this week either. Which I, I'm still going to honor that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. Because I said it. I put myself into those shoes. Okay. <laughs> and we'll start off with Glorious Greg. XGillies929. He's a Twitter fan of the month. You gotta. But yeah, that's right. Sorry, I didn't forget. Don't worry, I didn't forget, Greg. Don't get mad at me now. Don't, don't get hot. Okay? And he numbered them for me. Thank you for you guys out there as well uh, for numbering the tweets. Uh, I really do appreciate it as Twitter sometimes doesn't organize them right for me. But let's start off with the tweets. Glorious Greg. Number one. Raw was eh. Gets a 3.75 out of 10. All I can say is why, taker, why, and hashtag... <laughs> Uh, okay. And I was able to watch most of the A show, luckily. The further development of Miz and Cena feud was good. Mickey turning on Alexa was quite interesting. Although I hope we don't get a fatal four way at Mania. Also, where are the tag teams on SmackDown? Uh, good question. I don't know where they are. Really, they become irrelevant. 
And Orton and Styles match was just good. Or was good. Just sucks we're getting Styles versus Shane. No one wants it. It's worst for business. It's good. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be good. Yeah, Anyways, what, what, I'll give SmackDown an 8.5 out of 10. Oof, that's a very generous uh, rating. I don't know. Spray. I'm kind of pissed about the tag teams. Uh, where the fuck are they? Uh, and why are they not being used? American Alpha is on main event or yeah. the dark. Is the, that where? Yeah, match. the dark match. Yeah, we saw. I, I why they're in the dark match this week? If anyone wants to know, why? Fuck, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Maybe Kevin Dunn want them on TV. No. How do you not have tag teams on a show, on on a two hour show? You can't fit one tag team match. I guess. I know it, it felt like. They didn't this week. I know it's not an excuse, but they gave more time to Styles and Orton, which was fine with me because that was a great match. But maybe they could have taken like six or seven minutes out of that match and give it to the tag teams. You know, start building this Usos feud, which the rumored match is Usos versus American Alpha. There's like three weeks left, but there's no feud started. They are barely. Sorry. They had some sort of, I don't know what the hell that was a couple weeks ago, but... Anyways, uh, last tweet from Glorious Grey puts, also, Corbin attacking Ambrose was good. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that. And hashtag Corbin Revolution. Also, one last thing. Hashtag. God. <laughs> Told you. No one eats up with the roars. And he has the gif <laughs> from Fastlane of uh, <laughs> Braun Strowman trying to do the splash. <laughs> So I'm, you that laughed. was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I was dying watching Fast. I texted Brandon right away. Like, that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. That was pretty bad. Uh, next set of tweets, Casey Salvis at Salvis94 on Twitter. Raw was garbage. Goldberg looks ridiculous with that title. Nobody wants to see Lesnar and Goldberg. <laughs> I beg to differ, Casey. There are a lot of casuals out there that love to see it and pissing in their pants over that match. Uh, Enzo and Cass are horrible, especially Enzo, worst wrestler in the world. Annoying as hell. Dutterby, please release him. Oh, wow. Jeez, I don't know about that. Oof. That's a... I know you're mad, but damn. <laughs> I don't know if the Air Strowman, Greg says. LOL. <laughs> Air Strowman. I'm going to get myself a pair of Air Strowmans. Yeah. <laughs> Great to see Taker back, but not garbage reigns. Did the Bucktooth Beaver and Old Man McMahon hear the Rain Sucks chant? <laughs> Maybe they will realize nobody like Roman Reigns. Nobody likes Roman Reigns, and he's trash. Just like Raw, 1.5 out of 10, and the GIF of the dumpster fire. <laughs> Bucktooth Beaver, <laughs> nice. His SmackDown tweets, but SmackDown was okay. Good to see Mickey turn on Alexa. Why is Ellsworth on TV? The guy is an embarrassment. Please release him. Okay, I can agree with that release. Uh, where is American Alpha? Don't understand why they're never on TV. Styles Norton was good. Actually, a little bit excited for Styles versus Shane. Ooh, someone's excited for that. <laughs> because of the backstage segment after SmackDown. Should be interesting. 6 out of 10. Good rating there. Next set of tweets. Prince Jones. At TWFS Prince Jones. Raw was great. Goldberg versus Lesnar is the biggest main event ever. Okay, these are our... Okay, before I read Prince Jones's tweets here, I read it first, I'm like, what the fuck? And I realized that these are all sarcastic. So, take Prince Jones's tweets this week, guys, as sarcasm. Okay, 100% because of his ratings. Uh, Raw was great. Goldberg versus Lesnar is the biggest main event ever. And it's going to be fucking amazing. These full-timers suck. Raw, 10 out of 10. SmackDown was pretty good as well. The woman's segment was a clusterfuck, and Randy versus Bray one on one is gonna suck dick. Eight out of ten. <laughs> wow, very very sarcastic tweets from Prince Jones this week. Thank you as always. As always. Next set of tweets: Juggy Badass, Juggy Badass at Azay Azazel, if I'm saying that right. Underscore YT. Raw wasn't totally cringe. The only thing that gave me cancer was the entire Raw women's division. <laughs> Between Banks and Bailey, I've even seeing Taker take out my boy Raw is Reigns is was awesome. <laughs> Raw is Reigns. Raw is Reigns. They could save Reigns' career if they turn him heel, have him beat Taker by cheating, and run with that. Huh, that's actually an interesting idea. I give Raw a 6.25. It wasn't as bad as always. We'll get into my review about that. <laughs> uh, oh, the blessings of SmackDown. Always putting on a great show. Mickey the MILF kicking bliss. Orton and Styles was absolutely outstanding. And the confrontation between Styles and Shane was good. Even Team Dardaby vs. Ellsworth in Carmella was entertaining. Okay. I bet you the mixed tag match will be better than Goldberg vs. Lesnar. Yeah, probably will be. I, this is a rating just for you, Cappy. I gave it a 8.768 out of 10. 
Hashtag Monday Night Segments. Hashtag Raw is Reigns. Hashtag Blue Brand Brocks. Or Blue Brand Rocks. God, tongue twister right there. And hashtag... Oh, I didn't play it. Here we go. God. Next set of tweets. Tony Mercer at Recrem Why Not. Raw was great. Or Raw had a great first hour, but fell apart after that. Like usual. The Cruiserweights delivered two nights in a row, and that was great to see. It would have been a great two-hour show. The second hour was filler and continued into the third. 5.5 out of 10. That's just pretty solid rating right there. SmackDown was a good was good as always. The Orton Styles match was really good as well as the build up for Corbin and Ambrose. 8 out of 10. Definitely really agree. And he has a question, Tony Mercer. Will AJ Styles be able to carry Shane to a good WrestleMania match? If it's good if if the story is going in as good as I think the match could actually mean something and Styles can carry a broomstick to a four star match. What do you think? Ah, I have a lot of mixed feelings around this. Very, very, just too many mixed feelings. I could see Shane and Styles being somewhat good, but just Shane being a spot dummy. It's basically, basically like you he said, is. he's the broomstick to AJ Styles. But do I want to see that WrestleMania? No. Absolutely fucking not. Maybe at a minor pay-per-view, I can handle it. If there is a minor pay-per-view before WrestleMania, sure. Why not fucking have the, you can have it at the main event. I wouldn't care. But Just, AJ needs to be in yeah. something way more relevant than that. And it sucks because I thought it was going to be Nakamura. So it's not Nakamura. We can scratch Nakamura out because he's have, he's probably going to have a, a crazy-ass match uh, at NXT Orlando against either Ono or Rude, which we'll get into later. Um, so Styles can either face Shane or Kurt Angle, and it's probably not going to be Kurt Angle. It's probably going to be Shane. Look, at the poster's released, and Shane's on it in his wrestling gear. Great. I don't want to see that WrestleMania, but it's going to happen – if it ends up being good, I'm just, I'm going to be okay with it. I'm not going to be overly excited. But Sh- Styles, I feel, deserves better, man. He does. He, way better As than the this. best wrestler in the company, he needs to be doing something better than facing a 50-year-old Shane McMahon. And it sucks because I bet you the writers for SmackDown want him to do something better. But guess what? WrestleMania this year is not up to them. It's up to Vince only. Vince is writing the entire WrestleMania card this year. And right now, as it stands, I'm like, yes, this screams Vince McMahon up and down. Especially Goldberg and Lesnar Le- headlining. For the Universal title. Un- unbelievable. Anyways, but. moving on. Irrelevance f- at Forlorn on Twitter. Didn't watch Fastlane. I read the results. Good. Well, I, well I'm glad you didn't watch it then. I don't care about Owens losing. What I care about is Braun lost. That, oh. Braun lost. that surprised me. <laughs> Fuck Reigns. Raw, I don't know. Didn't watch it. Uh, the opening segment and the heat between Aries and Neville was good. I fell asleep after that. Well, I don't blame you there either. Nothing to care about. SmackDown. It was mad tonight. Opening match and women's match was lazy. There was, was a This was a building show, but with more words. A promo here that turned there. Not much wrestling except the main event. Amazing. Love the gorilla position part after. So the whole uh, Styles backstage. Everyone trashing. That this is going to be the shit match when people forget that AJ Styles is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time in Shane. Someone who can put on gem matches, which is which when it's right. Because he's reckless with his body, and I'm interested in the build. I'm interested in interested to see what Shane will have with it. Interested to see what type of match AJ Styles and Shane will have at WrestleMania. Well, you know Styles yeah. is going to carry the match. Yeah, he's going to have to. Again, it I. I know Irrelevance, you're one of those people that think Shane can put on a good match. But he's gotten old now, man. I know he had, like, but you just look. Go rewatch last year's WrestleMania. There's only two good spots out of the whole match. It was him obviously going off the cage. And after that, I think he might have had a good spot somewhere else where I don't remember. And then but look what happened to him at Survivor Series. Yeah. He just, he got hurt. Seriously hurt. Because he can't keep up with the wrestlers today. And you think he's going to keep up with AJ Styles? Fuck no. You I want to see him. He's going to get hurt. <laughs> Uh, Miz still the best part of SmackDown. Oh wait, never mind. I forgot my boy. God, he's not even on SmackDown. He's best part of SmackDown. Oh wait, never mind. Uh, Braun, I'm not gonna do it because I just fucked up the clicking here. Braun isn't on SmackDown. Well, oh my God, what did I just do? I just botched hard in the middle of this. I clicked X on the <laughs> tweets. I'll just scroll down. God, I always botch during your tweets. I need a better way of doing this. Uh, fuck Roman Reigns in those white shoes he wore. Oh, yeah, he wore, like, running shoes this week. Didn't look like Yeah, wh- I don't know why he wasn't wearing actual boots. <laughs> he calls them cheap. 
<laughs> anyway, time for my third run. Get ready for it. Christ. Oh, God. Uh, Raw gets a three. SmackDown gets a seven. Now it's time for some sleep. But first, bro, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Uh, now it's time for the Michael Chow tweets. And we're going to debut, I guess I debuted his theme last week. So we're going to do his new theme again. Again, if you guys don't know, he is the Twitter fan of the year for 2016. And he gets his own entrance theme. So, in saying that, here are Michael Chow's tweets. Right, Michael Chow in Michael Chow TV again. Like I said in the, in the beginning of the show, go check out Michael Chow TV, guys. Go follow him on Twitter and check out his debut of his new podcast. And we'll get into his tweets this week. And he's got some interesting ones, to say the least. Uh, well, our, he starts off with no rating for Raw. Ooh, no rating for Raw. Okay, Michael Chow, because I was part of the hashtag boycott Raw. Hashtag watch SmackDown Live movement. <laughs> but I caught the highlights and it looked meh. And he's got a gif of uh, Bart and Lisa going meh. <laughs> and Michael Chow, uh, corporate cappy here, loves The Simpsons. So that's a yes. Uh, I liked Lesnar and Goldberg's segment only because seeing the F5 felt so good after all the crap that everybody has put us through. <laughs> he's got the Drake uh, hand clap. And I thought Raw had some balls to give us Taker versus Braun at Mania, but nope. At least we got a choke slam. Hashtag Roman fail. Uh, SmackDown Live, 8 out of 10. SmackDown Live's three-match show was better than the whole history of Fastlane. <laughs> uh, was the hashtag Cena and Nikki burying company really needed? Do they seriously need to put Cena and Nikki over? Hashtag Carmella deserves better. 100% agree. 100%. Ellsworth does not. No, Cringeworth can go. Uh, question. Question. <laughs> What is your opinion of both Raw and SmackDown Live's women's title matches not being singles matches at WrestleMania? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Don't like it. Don't like it at all. Should be one on one, my opinion. There's too many multi man matches at WrestleMania this year. I can handle the women's triple threat, but uh, on Raw, Raw but SmackDown's what oh they God. did this week just blew my mind. Yeah, we'll get into that later. And lastly, hashtag low down in Orlando episode is the only reason I'm saying I'm looking forward to WrestleMania. Oh, thank, oh, you, thank you, Michael Chow. Chow. Really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, hashtag low down in Orlando and Alexa Bliss's WrestleMania entrance. Yes. Man, I'm ready for WrestleMania attire. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Might need to be wearing dark pants that day, <laughs> as JR would say. Yeah, all right. Those are your tweets, though, for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. As always, do appreciate it. You guys tuning in and chiming in with your questions and thoughts and concerns about the WWE product, which is mediocre at best lately. And saying that, speaking of mediocre, we're going into the Raw review. Oh. Uh, Can we just briefly talk about? I don't want to talk about Fastlane much. Oh, the god awful pay per view. But they ruined but so any many things on Fastlane. Yeah, they ruined Charlotte's pay per view streak. They ruined Braun's undefeated streak for God knows what reason. And then the Kevin Owens buried Roman alive always match. always wins. Raw. Yeah. And then the Kevin the Owens sport. buried alive match. Yeah. That, like, there was a buried alive match. We missed it, guys. The, it lasted nine seconds. The only <laughs> the only match worth watching was Neville and Jack Gallagher. That was yeah. it. Maybe Joe and, and Zayn. That's it. Raw was even better this week. Raw was literally not any better whatsoever. I didn't enjoy Raw. from I, I rewatched it from start to finish, which is crap. Like, I was reading it on Monday, and I rewatched it yesterday. It was just shit. It was terrible. It was... From start to finish, Raw sucked. Uh, some of the some of the stories just and the feuds that they started just don't make sense. <laughs> or, like, they're just starting it now. We're almost three weeks out of Mania. This, like, some of the feuds could have been built longer than this, but they just start now. Okay, neat. Anyways, uh, really contemplating on doing a review this week. I was texting Cappy. I'm like, man, I really don't want to do a review this week. Raw was just too bad to do a review. Um, literally rather have watched the land before time instead of raw this week. And I tweeted that and literally I, I was really contemplating on watching the land before time t yesterday, but you know what? I got the review for you guys. I had to suffer through that and we're getting to the opening segment, which was actually better than fast line in its entirety. Is that a shocker? I don't know. We're going to do it. We opened with Chris Jericho, uh, actually shocked. It wasn't Goldberg or Roman though. Seriously. I was, I was going to, I was 
expecting at least one of those guys' music to hit, but we got we got Jericho. Uh, Jericho opens the show. It appears that a full baby face turn is complete for Chris Jericho. I mean, he was already baby face, really. Yeah, but now but... it's like fully, you know, he's never, yeah. there's never like a slight, you know, I don't know if he's, do you think he continues to list thing as a face? Yes, you have yeah. to. You see his new shirt he has? It's a, he's got a new shirt. I don't know if it's WWE. It's not a WWE maybe. authentic. But it uh, says you stupid idiot on the front. Yeah, it's, it goes towards this charity he's a part of, but yeah. I'm probably going to get one. There, <laughs> You can get a sweater too. Yeah. Jericho says he screwed Kevin Owens out of the Universal title last night at WWE Fastlane. Goldberg can thank him for that later. Owens had it coming. During the Festival of Friendship, Owens took a knife to the heart of Jericho. <laughs> stuck it in, in, man. <laughs> uh, Jericho says he needs answers. Why did Owens do that to him? Why? Why, why Jericho? You know what? I, I want answers why. to my questions. Why was WrestleMania being booked so bad? Why? Why is this man had to write everything? Why? Why? <laughs> I have questions that need to be answered, and they're not, because we're given crappy product and a crappy card for the biggest event of the year. That's my wise. Any days. Anyways. <laughs> Owens comes out under the ramp. Owens says that after what Jericho did to him last night, he doesn't owe Jericho anything. Owens says he didn't stab his best friend in the back. Jericho was never his best friend to begin with. Oof. <laughs> Now, you could feel in the crowd here that the the disappointment and, like, literally it's, it felt like Owens was stabbing everyone in the heart just then and there. It was, this was such a good segment. Um, Sami Zayn was once his best friend, and Owens stabbed him in the back, too. And he would do it over and over and over again. Jericho was just a tool. Hmm. Interesting. The crowd starts a Goldberg chant. Owens says he knows that for a fact that he would have beaten Goldberg at Fastlane if it wasn't for Jericho. Owen says he can admit that last night Jericho outsmarted him. Uh, Jericho says, oh, just get the word too fast here. Uh, Jericho says that he was complacent and liked the idea of having a friend. Jericho says he has friends. He's surrounded by them. That he has the friends of Jericho to cheer him on, on man. man. <laughs> so good. Two fucking lines by Jericho here. They're just absolute gold. <laughs> Greg chiming in with the cheer him on, man. Uh, Costing Owens a universal title was just the start of this. Uh, what happened at Fastlane was just the start of a winding road that leads to Owens versus Jericho at WrestleMania. So right here we get the official booking of these two at WrestleMania. Um, obvious, we knew this from like January and December that this was going to happen. Uh, Owens will face Jericho at WrestleMania only if Jericho puts that U.S. title on the line. He's like, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jericho <laughs> says, Done. Jericho says, WrestleMania is about a month away, and there is no reason to wait. Owens runs to the ring, and Jericho and Owens start to brawl here. Samoa Joe appears out of nowhere and attacks Chris Jericho from behind. So, look, he got the this uh, so-called uh, stable. Yeah. Uh, more more hints of this so-called st the new evolution, apparently, is going to be called. Um, forming together. Sami Zayn hits the ring with a steel chair. Zayn and Jericho clear the ring, which leads to a commercial break, and when we come back from commercial break, we get an impromptu match of Kevin Owens versus Zayn. I was literally expecting a tag team match here. We get Owens versus Zayn one-on-one, -on -one, which, you know what, I'm okay with. Because I'd love to see these guys wrestle forever. They have the t-shirt out, wrestle forever. I see these guys wrestle every week. I don't. This would probably be the only match I'd love to see over and over again. Except this match was like four minutes long. Yeah, too bad it lasted less than five minutes. But longer than Goldberg and Owens' match at Fastlane. But I don't know what they're doing with Sami Zayn. Like, yeah. they're completely burying him. I think this... Okay, so the new draft is coming up. And I and I, I don't know if anyone's heard about this, but the new draft rules. The whole roster is not being drafted. The Both GMs are only going to have a certain amount of people to pick from the men's division, the women's division, and out of NXT. And tag teams? Yeah. They're only going to have a certain few. How is that going to work? It's probably going to be like three of each. So what, do they get to keep certain people? I think, I don't, I don't know if there's going to be keepers and all that. I know that the, just the rules are that they're only going to be able to pick certain people. There's not going to be the entire roster drafted like mm -hmm. we just saw last year. It's, it's going to go back to like what we used to see. So there was only a few picks, and there were some WWE.com picks, but it wasn't the whole roster. So we'll see. There'll be some more news I would laugh if later. some guy gets sent to NXT. <laughs> I would laugh. Uh, Owens makes a uh, well. There's some people that should go to NXT, but we'll get into that. <clears throat> Dana Brooke. Yeah. Uh, Owens makes a quick work of the match, and Zayn uh, of or makes a quick work of Zayn and wins with a clean pop-up powerbomb. Like he just literally squashed Sami Zayn. Two nights in a row, Zayn gets 
absolutely destroyed. I think Zane's going to go to uh, SmackDown. Oh, yeah, Greg, Greg knows more about this. He said champions are off limits. Mm. So if you're a champion, you're safe. We'll see. I think 205 Live should be exempt, too, because you can't really draft out of there. You want to send They're Mark raw, Henry to the Cruiserweight raw division? Exclusive. <laughs> Uh, and people from NXT are going to be drafted, Greg said. Okay. Uh, move on here. Rich Swan versus Neville for the Cruiserweight Championship. Am I missing something here? How did Swan get a title shot? Because he never got his rematch. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. I was really confused. Okay. Anyway, before the match, we had a self-promo package by Austin Aries his in-ring return. So he's been doing his self-promo packages. And he talks about how great his package is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss him on commentary, man. That's probably one thing I'm going to miss about Tool. Like, if he gets replaced, is it just going to be Grays and Ronaldo now? Maybe they bring up someone else from the Cruiserweight division. I don't know. Maybe anyway. they bring in Funaki. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, back back to the match. It's pretty decent. Uh, Cruiserweights were given a lot of time here. There was two commercial breaks during this entire match. I thought this was a good match. Uh, I don't think... I think everyone just needs to calm down. It's probably going to go back to status quo next week. We're probably going to get less than 10 minutes for the entire three hours. Uh, after a mixed Phoenix Splash by Swan, Neville locks in this modified Ring of Saturn, apparently it was called, and gets a submission win. So a submission win by Neville. Yeah, he's using this new submission finisher. That's cool. Two nights in a row, Neville's put on a great match. Yeah, uh, good for him, man. He's such a... See, I think we were talking about before Neville even went to the Cruiserweight Division, how much he would be a key factor for the Cruiserweight Division. And so far, he's carrying yeah, it. He's carrying it. Uh, after the match, Austin Aries hits the ring and asks Neville, how does it feel to be on top of the mountain? The crowd starts chanting Austin Aries heavily. Neville says he's done exactly what he said he said he would do to everyone who overlooked him and doubted him. Look at him now. Neville holds the belt up around his, or over his head. Aries says he thinks that people can't hear Neville. Aries asks Neville if he's sure he can't think of anyone who can compete with him. The crowd starts to scream Austin Aries again. <laughs> Aries says it seems the WWE Universe would disagree with you, Neville. Neville says Aries cannot be serious. Be cons- Aries cannot be serious about considering himself. There is no way Aries is on his level. Neville tells Aries to go back to the announce booth before he re-breaks Aries' orbital socket. Mm. Uh, Aries says he's trying to do his job here. Aries says he's just one more question for Neville. Well, and- it isn't a question. It's more of a statement. And just takes the microphone and pops Neville right in the face. And before that, he took his sunglasses off and his eye looks great. Yeah. It didn't uh, look like he was any what. Then Aries hits uh, hits the ropes and uh, uh, just obliterates Neville here. It's, I guess it's called the Roar and Elbow. I think it's like his finisher, like one of them or a signature. Yeah, and move. then he tossed Neville. But out it's of the sick. Ring. He like does like a complete spin. Uh, it's almost like uh, Okada's uh, move, finishing move. God, what's his finishing move name? Uh, Rainmaker. It's almost like that. And that's just such a sick. If you guys don't know Okada's finisher, go look it up on YouTube. It's pretty sick. Uh, move on here. In ring with Goldberg. I'm still very sour that WWE went to that route, but can't do anything now. Can't really complain about it much more. It happened. Oldberg. Uh, their match doesn't need a title in it. For Christ's sakes, how many times do we have to say that? It doesn't need a, it, it could be the co-main event. You don't need a title. But hey, what do I know? Vincent Bugs Bunny back there can produce better stuff than I can, I guess. Whatever. Uh, Goldberg says the Universal title belongs to the fans just as much as it does to him. He stands before us tonight as a humble man. Goldberg says he's going to tell us something he never thought he would make public. The crowd chants CM Punk. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I hear that. Yeah. It's okay. like, what? Before Goldberg can go on, Paul Heyman comes out. Honestly, I think they sent Paul Heyman out here because <laughs> they didn't want Goldberg to like freeze up and not know what to do with the, with CM, the CM Punk, Punk chance being drunk. It was probably I, don't th- I think they had to call an audible and like be like, yo, yeah. Heyman, get out there now. I don't think he was supposed to go out there at that point. And the one thing about the CM Punk chance, guys, okay. I'm actually getting sick and tired of you people complaining about him. And like, oh, the crowd's trying to see him punk. Shut up, Chicago. Get over it, blah, blah, blah. I guarantee you right now that if you stiffs heard his fucking music play at that point, you would jump out of your chair and piss yourself. You'd be all over. Oh, my God, I love CM Punk again. Blah, 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 blah. Guaranteed. Take my word for it. You would not complain that he would. Co- that If he came out here, you wouldn't complain about it. But if he's not, I don't care. Just, I just don't want people to complain about the chance. You're in Chicago. You're going to get them. Expect it. It's in this okay? hometown, yeah. They should be the ones to shut up about it. Just saying. But it was good that they sent Paul Heyman out there because yeah. Goldberg would have just yeah. got destroyed by yeah. CM. So Heyman yeah. says the WWE Universe should not confuse him as someone who can talk 
who can walk to the ring and offer Goldberg a handshake to congratulate him on his victory. No, Heyman did not come alone. Heyman calls his client out, client out, and Brock Lesnar walks down to the ramp, gets in Goldberg's face. Heyman is talking to the mic here. Heyman says the only person that may be happier than Goldberg about Goldberg's winning. The... Sorry, I think I read that right or wrong. Heyman says the only person that may be happier than Goldberg about Goldberg winning the title is Lesnar. Lesnar is going to shake Goldberg's hand because Goldberg is every bit of a beast as Lesnar. Heyman says that he doesn't make predictions, he makes spoilers. Now, at WrestleMania, there will be a new WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion, and it will be Brock Lesnar. As Goldberg leaves, they will say, there is, there he is, Brock's bitch. And Goldberg turns and looks at Heyman, and Lesnar picks up Goldberg and hits him with the F5 here. Yes. I l- and the only the best, good part of this entire segment. Man. The best part was that Goldberg held on to the title while he's getting that fight. Yeah, and if you look closely, because I like to take stuff in depth here, he dropped the title, I think, way too late, and when he got F5, his knee just crushed the title. Like, I, I w- I'm I, like, oh my god, he's hurt. He's not- They're going to have to find a replacement now, man. This Goldberg is- taking an F5. Yeah. Wow. He must have been so... He looked, like, seriously shaken up. As in, like, I could see on Goldberg's face, he looked like he was hurt. Oh my god, man. What's going to happen at WrestleMania? If this is the main event, you're not going to have a two-second main event. What the hell is going to happen? Unless... I got this crazy theory I was thinking of last night before I went to bed. What if it is a, like, three-second match, and Brock Lesnar's the one to squash Goldberg, and then Gold- Lesnar has a match against someone else right away. Can you think of anyone who Kurt deserves Angle? their Universal title match back? Oh, <laughs> Kevin Owens. Nope. Oh, Finn ben Balor? Balor comes out. Balor doesn't have a match with anyone here. He's just riding live events up until WrestleMania. People are wondering, where the fuck is Balor? He's not on the card. And then as soon as Lesnar wins, Balor's music hits and he comes out. Guess That's a pretty cool rematch. theory. Could you imagine? Because the Goldberg match is going to be like yeah. a minute long. Like Vince must know in the back of his head that people are going to boo the shit out of this match. <laughs> He's got to have a backup. That crowd will erupt if Finn Balor comes out here. on like that, And it beats Goldberg. Or beats Brock Lesnar. For the title, right there. And then that's how you wanted to carry 2016 with Balor as the champion. This is the way to do it. Right? That would be epic. Greg, interesting thing, right? Right, Greg? I thought this was right before I was sleeping. I'm like, oh my god, I'd probably mark out if this happened. Uh, Greg says, if he came, comes out as the demon, he will, he will uh, slay Brock Lesnar. So move on on the crappy show of uh, Raw always win or Reigns always wins. Enzo and Cass versus a club for the rematch for the Raw Tag Team titles. And something I don't get here, man. If the rematch clause are used here, then are, is then Enzo and Cass should not get a WrestleMania shot. Because if they're going to use them now, then it doesn't make sense. that they You're not going to beat anyone else to become number one contender, which we now know after this what happened. It's Raw um, logic. But at that point, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. So anyways, the whole Raw Tag Team division doesn't make sense for that matter. And it's sad because there's a lot of potential that just doesn't make sense. It definitely needs to be more teams. I agree with people who say that. Um, once they, they get better and get more teams in there, I think we'll see a different division out of the Raw Tag Team Division. It's just so bare. Um, the, the cupboards yeah. are getting bare. Yeah. Uh, anyways, this match sucked. It literally was a duplicate of Fastlane. It literally was almost pound for pound and move for move the same thing, except Cesaro and, and Sheamus came out to ringside. And then we had the great ending. Yeah, so Enzo about. was like celebrating outside the ring, and he runs into Cesaro and spills his... Oh, poor Cesaro. He got his coffee spilled all over him. Oh, no. It got on Sheamus. Oh, poor you guys. Oh, you're, my you're God. You're beside a wrestling ring with a coffee. What, what do you expect? What do you, dude, why is he sipping coffee in the first place? It's not like it's 3 in the morning or 6 in the morning. Why are you drinking coffee that late at night for? <laughs> you're not even going to wrestle. Why are you drinking coffee? Oh, and so God. Cesaro runs in the ring... And then causes hits, the DQ. Yeah, causes the DQ. And Sheamus and Cesaro clear the ring as Enzo and Cass and the club are leaving up the ramp. Great. Moving on. So it's going to be a triple threat. I mean, yeah. the triple threats galore at WrestleMania, yeah. it seems like. Uh, after this, Ravishing Rick Rude is uh, announced into the Hall of Fame. Rick Rude lives. Yep. <laughs> uh, definitely well deserved. Congrats to him. Backstage, we get shown all the tag teams that were, were just in that match arguing with each other. Fully cringely breaks it up with his screening, man. And yells out that Enzo and Cass will face Cesaro and Sheamus next week to determine the number one contender. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen in that match. Do the club interfere? 
Ooh, what a good prediction. The club interferes. Stop. And causes no one to be number one contender. And then what does Foley do? Books a triple threat match for WrestleMania. You're already here first, guys. That's exactly what's going to happen next week. Guaranteed. <laughs> Anyways, move on. Some more cruiserweight action. Akira Tozawa versus Araya Davari. Really good match. For the amount of time it got, really good match. Uh, good showing by both men. Davari, I think, is seriously underrated for the cruiserweight division. Guy is... No, 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 no. Yeah, is a serious... No, 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 no. That's why I love his entrance team. He's actually a really good wrestler, and I, I, I'm actually ashamed that they don't give him the time that he deserves. Um, Tozawa hits the snap German suplex for the win. After the match, he gets on the mic and calls out Brian Kendrick. His English is not the best either. Um, that's not going to be good for Vince, man. He doesn't like that. Kendrick comes out and says that he will answer. And if got for guys that people that don't know that, that's why Nakamura has been in NXT this long. He wants he wanted Nakamura to improve on his English. Mm. So, and he's gotten somewhat better. I don't know. You you don't want to have Kendrick come out with a or a, Nakamura come out with a translator. It, just, it ruins the aura of Nakamura. Uh, Kendrick comes out. He says he will answer. He has an answer for Cesaro, but it'll be on tomorrow night. So I guess they're just hyping 205 Live for people to watch it. Whatever. <sighs> Move on here. We got the the New Day versus the Shining Stars. Wow. Nothing new. Same shit. Different Raw. New They're... Day wins. We're going to move on. So we got an in-ring segment with <laughs> Bailey and Foley here. Uh, Foley congratulates Bailey on her win last night. Stupid. Uh, Bailey says she doesn't feel... Or Greg says Nakamura to SmackDown. I really hope so. Uh, Bailey says that she doesn't feel like a champion right now. She asked Sasha Banks not to get involved, and we all saw what happened. Bailey says last year she promised herself she would be on the WrestleMania card. Foley says he understands, but Bailey needs to focus on defending her title at WrestleMania. The question is, who? 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 <laughs> is she going to face at WrestleMania? Sasha Banks comes out, and I'm like, oh, God, please. He'll turn. He'll turn. Please, please, please. And Banks makes a case for her to challenge Bailey at WrestleMania for the title. And I'm like, Foley's like asking the crowd what they think. I'm like, oh, my God, are they actually going to do this one-on-one? -on -one? But then I think, oh, yeah. The Raw division is just really bad. So they're obviously not going to be one on one. Then Charlotte Dana Brooke comes out. I'm like, oh, there we go. Of course. There we go. I can't be the, I can't get my hopes up that bad. Uh, Charlotte says the plan has finally been revealed. Banks knows that as long as Charlotte was WWE champion, Banks was not able to get a title match. That is why Banks has been helping Bailey. Charlotte claims that Banks is just using Bailey to get what she wants. Foley says the problem is Charlotte lost her congrat. Uh, contractually obligated rematch. And then Stephanie McMahon comes out at this point, and I'm like, oh, God, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and you know, when Stephanie McMahon appears in Chicago, oh what happens? Oh, God. She literally uh, got in the ring, and it was just CM, CM Punk. Punk chance. Like, louder than ever, man. They're literally trying to drown her out. Uh, Stephanie says, Foley isn't the boss, and neither is Banks. <laughs> I like when she came in and said, you guys are so typical losers, yeah. just like CM Punk. I'm like, God, wow. what a jab at Punk. <laughs> Uh, Stephanie says the people of Chicago are predictable. They're all losers just like CM Punk. So we yeah. just said they're all cheer for the wrong people. Charlotte is right. Banks is om is the most manipulative person in the locker room just so she can get her hands on the woman's title. Can't say that. I disagree. Yeah. Bailey would not be the woman's champion. Stephanie says the match at WrestleMania will be Bailey against Charlotte for the woman's title. Foley then gets angry and tells Stephanie that she can't leave the boss out in the cold like that. Stephanie then gets in Foley's face and asks him, who is the boss? Foley says, after the year Banks has had, she deserves to be in the match with at Mania. Give it to Foley there. Get, uh, hyping up your girl there. Uh, Foley proposes that Banks face Charlotte next week with the winner to go on to face Bailey at WrestleMania. Stephanie says she will do fully one better. Banks will face Bailey tonight, and if Banks wins, the match of Mania will be a triple threat match. That's not better. I like not. Foley's idea better than this shit. Because we know what was going to happen. I didn't know what was going to happen if it was the match next week. I know what the fuck was just about to happen. It, it was so predictable and useless. And then you could have booked for next week to try to get me excited for that, but nope. Yeah. Stephanie then drops the mic and walks away. Cool, Steph, get out of here. So Charlotte uh, just gets put in this match for no reason at all. Yeah, Sasha. No, Charlotte. Oh, the, that. Yeah, for the, the triple threat. Yeah. No reason at all. D just got a free ride She's not, right into she, it. She has no obligated rematch. She just gets to put... Why? What did she do to earn it? She's got to build her way back up again. She lost it. Fair and square. Although there was, you know, it was tarnished a little bit. It's still a loss. I don't understand. How did she automatically get be put in this match? No. it's That's why the Raw Woods division sucks. It's, that's, the, you can only, that's the only way you can put it. It sucks. So Sasha vs. Bailey, 
whatever. This clusterfuck mess. I don't care. <laughs> Decent match. Banks locks in the bank statement and makes uh, Bailey taps, but like it made it like Charlotte tried to interfere, but then Banks kicked her. It just I, I, this match just confused me. I just I didn't like it. It made me cringe. Seriously. Then Charlotte then comes in and boots both girls to end the segment. Cool. Happy Sasha's Great. in the match. I was so glad his division is doing so good. <laughs> Uh, move on. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm just getting too pissed off. Triple H, live via satellite. Heaven forbid he's actually at wow, Raw. Pulling a rock over here. Uh, which understandable, maybe, because you know, he's running the, the brand that kicks Raw's ass every week. Uh, Triple H says, you have to take your hat off for the WWE medical staff. They're top notch. They're taking good care of Seth Rollins. Is getting it, uh, they're taking good care of Seth Rollins. And it is show a video package of him getting better. Triple H says that in, the, uh, in his day, he didn't have to call himself... By many names, he was known as. By many names, he was known as now. Rollins, on the other end, has no choice but to call himself the man because no one else will. Why? Because it could be. It couldn't be farther from the truth. If Rollins is stupid enough to call Triple H out at WrestleMania, it will be the last thing Rollins ever does. And uh, I guess during the segment, uh, Triple H also took a stab at C- a jab at CM Punk, saying that the medical doctors are the best in the world. <laughs> Oh man, what's with the jabs of CM Punk, man? It's not like he's been jabbing back. I don't understand that. That's, that's kind of like cares. WWE trying to restart a fight that's already done. I don't know. Anyways, uh, move on. We actually had a anticipating match, but it was okay. Joe versus Jericho. It was decent, but it was too short in my opinion. Uh, Joe looked dominant as he should be, you know, throughout the entire match. Locks in the Coquina clutch on the floor on the outside. Jericho passes out. And Samojo was able to roll back in the ring before the referee counts to 10. And Jericho gets counted out for this match. That's the only ending I didn't like about that. I mean, they could have done something better. Um, but after the match, Joe rolls Jericho back in the ring. And as soon as Joe gets in the ring, Jericho hits the code breaker on Samoa Joe. And Joe tumbles out to the outside, but doesn't leave his feet. Hmm. I didn't know what to think after that. It just looked, again, like lazy booking. I think someone pointed out, it's just lazy booking. They don't they don't know what to do, so they, they think of something on the spot that it probably doesn't look good, but they just make them go out and do it anyways. And it's terrible. So what what's gonna go from there? I don't know. I, I don't know what Smo Joe's gonna do. He's probably gonna face Sami Zayn again. It's probably gonna be Joe and Zayn. We're gonna get that rematch. Unless or Balor. If if they wanted to and another fan, kind of small fancy book of mine. Have Joe go into Andre the Giant more. You want people to get hyped for that Andre the Giant more Battle Royal. If you just put Strowman in there without anyone that has a test to beat him, then it's going to be too obvious. Put Joe in that. Have the last two people be Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman. That would actually be decent. Right? Like, why would they do that? Anyways. Greg says he's watching Logan and listening to the podcast. I don't know how to do it. How about you turn off Logan? Logan can wait. That's not live. Okay, we're live. Come on, Greg. F- Twitter fan of the month, Greg. Come on now. Delete. Delete. I'm going to delete you, Greg. Let ask the seven deities to come down and render you obsolete. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love Broken My Hardy. All right, main event and segment. Well, typical Monday Night Raw main event being a segment. Oh, my God. And this... Ladies and gentlemen, this was cringe. Sprinkle so... a little bit of Roman. Yep. Uh, Strowman... <laughs> Strowman says Reigns got lucky. So Strowman comes out. Stra- <laughs> Strowman says Reigns got lucky last night. Oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> he yeah, beat you <laughs> when you went for Air Stiff. Strowman. Yeah, when you went for Air Strowman. Strowman says he doesn't need a match. Reigns better get out here right now and fight him. So you don't need a match, but you want Reigns to come out here. Okay. Uh, Chicago doesn't like. He says Chicago doesn't like Roman. The crowd actually gets behind Strowman here, which is funny. And neither does Strowman. Rain's music hits for like a split second, but then the gong goes off, and I'm like, "Oh no! My are they God. swerving us? They're gonna give us Strowman versus I'm Taker?" I'm like, "If we get, I, I'm like, th- at least this is, at this point, I'm like, okay, this is better than Reigns and Taker. I can probably get behind this maybe if the right storyline came out." So Undertaker comes out, he's got to stare down with Strowman, but then Strowman backs out of the ring and like he's just staring at him and Undertaker staring at each other as he's walking through the, the crowd. I don't like this at all. It makes Strowman look so weak that yeah. he can't even stand up to a 50 year old guy. Yeah, and he's supposed to be this big dom- the most I dominant think, uh, figure. Yeah, at least they should have done like Taker ducks a clothesline and then gives him a choke slam. At least you know you can. You it can makes still Roman look, look like such yeah. a bitch. Or, or like, yeah, it's just something like that. And then why even have him out there? I don't know. And I can actually get I could actually get sort of hyped for that. 
But no, then we I... get the most cringe sound ever to hear on a Monday night, especially this segment. Roman Reigns music starts. <laughs> Are you serious? They're actually going through with this. They 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 trolled us with the whole Strowman thing, and we're then... getting Reigns versus. Ta- Are you kidding me? The match I don't want to see and didn't want to see since the the, the the start of the rumor, and it actually is gonna. Oh my God! Oh, we're seeing Reigns versus Taker. I'm what? I'm reading people on Twitter lately, and they're saying, "Oh, this could actually be a good match." How can this be a good match? This is career suicide for a guy that's supposed to be the next John Cena. Oh my God! But I don't understand. Why, the, why I don't understand why Taker wants to put him over? Why him? I don't know. I I would have rather Strowman. At least I he, I, at least he could be the. Next, I won't like it, but I at least could get somewhat behind it. I can't get behind Reigns and Taker. At least he could care. be the next big, fearful, dominant mm. figure. You know what I mean? And like you need what, one of those for Raw because you got Bray Wyatt on SmackDown. You're gonna need it for Raw. What do you need? What does Roman need to win this match for? I don't know. It just it, they made Strowman look weak in two days. They just ruined all credibility I had for Braun Strowman in the year they built him up. Yeah. So Reigns grabs the mic and tells Taker that Strowman called out him not you taker and reigns tells taker that this is his yard now with all due respect with all due respect roman reigns i wish you were off tv Um, (laughs) reigns and taker both glance the wrestlemania sign and then taker grabs reigns by the throat and chokeslam the only thing i loved about this whole segment segment, and the crowd went nuts yeah and taker walks away to end the show but i still don't want to see this mad because the ending was great but you still know what the end result's gonna be reigns is gonna win Obviously, it was nice to see Reigns get choke slammed, but you know what what is gonna happen? Yeah, I I can't I can't talk about it anymore because I can't talk about something and go in depth about something I don't and have no interest in. Right, so I'm I'm done talking about. It. Uh, my raw score is three out of ten this week. Oh, you're always copying me. Oh, you did three out of ten yep. this week? I didn't even know that. Uh, I always will go two. I said it was a slightly better to a three. Not much. Slight, maybe like 2.95? <laughs> well, no. But, but. <laughs> it gets one better point this week. One better point? Three. Three out of ten from the norm, two out of ten that I usually give, give okay. it. Okay. I can go with that. So, But yeah, it was one better. Surprisingly, shock. It, it's sad that Raw was slightly better than Fastlane. Not by much, by slightly. But better. how Raw was better than a pay-per-view. Fastlane got a one. I I can't rate Fastlane because I have no comment for it. I only give the one to Neville and Gallagher. That's okay, it. Okay, fine. Yeah, I give that. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. So the only thing that Rod did good, did well in the last two days was two good cruiserweight matches. Yeah. Pretty much. That was it. Yeah. Uh. So let's move on to the blue brand. A show. Uh. Barely won this week. I'll give him. I'll give him the pass this week. It barely won. Definitely a weak episode of SmackDown this week. Uh, although the opening video before the show started, great production. That was like, it got that Undertaker vignette feel. I loved it. If you guys missed it, go watch it again. Uh, Bray Wyatt, 100% ascending to the new face of fear. Uh, just from watching this promo. Mm-hmm. It's going to be sick to see him in the future and what they do with him. So, excited for that. Uh, we're getting to the opening segment of SmackDown. And we start off with Shane McMahon. And Daniel Bryan. And although I don't like, we always say we don't like starting to show off with authority figures. Um, at least these two can get over. Unlike Stephen McMahon. Foley can get over. But that's only because he says the city's name. And he gets a cheap pop. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Shane start by talking about Rus- the WrestleMania WWE title picture. Daniel believes it should be Randy Orton. Shane believes it should be AJ Styles. Uh, they say they don't always agree with each other. And... They each give uh, their points for their picks with footage of Randy giving his shot up to uh, – giving his shot at WrestleMania up and then uh, the other footage of him last week burning the white compound. Um, but then Shane and Dan Bryan are contemplating what they should do. I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't they solve that last week? It wasn't announced last week that this, the, the number one contender was going to be for this show. And that's what they do. They book it. They book the already booked number one contender match between Randy Orton and AJ Styles. Why did they need to do this segment then? If it was already booked, they made it seem like it wasn't booked already. And like there was all this mass confusion. We knew what was going on. We didn't need justification. I just felt like they wasted an opening segment here. 
They could have done a lot better, and or maybe Styles could have came out and interrupted yeah. them. And it, we get more of this first time ever shit. Like that would be loves this man. They they throughout the whole show that's all they're talking about this the Randy Orton Styles first time ever first time ever. They mention it like five times during the, the actual match itself. Whatever. So we move on to the next segment, which is a match: Nikki Bella and John Cena versus James Cringeworth and Carmella. Oh yes, I am God. calling him Cringeworth from now on because he's just cringe. He gets his entrance job. I'm not upset about that. Uh, what the hell is he wearing? What is that? He's wearing Carmella tights. <laughs> Carmella, though? Wow. My lord. Does she ever look good, man? And then Nikki Bella coming out and ripping both. She's going to rip both the shirts one day. It'll be a glorious day. Glo- <laughs> glorious, glorious day. Greg. Glorious we'll Greg. There's a pun to you. Other than that. Do I really to say more about this match? No, absolutely. Well, you can talk about one thing. Miz cutting a good promo after. That's probably yeah, the only highlight. Miz and Maurice attacking them after, and then Maurice says, yeah. Nikki, take that bitch. Or break and, that bitch. <laughs> yeah. So, neat match. And you got and the it. stupid the two-knuckle shuffle, which you'll yeah. get into later. Yeah. Uh, so, backstage after this, Randy Orton basically gets he gets interviewed by Renee Young, basically tells that AJ Styles should be scared of Randy Orton, and he should run. And Ooh. he's got no hood, so it's Randy Orton face. Yeah. And I, I got a, I got a question here for you guys out there. Who is the face and who is the heel? I thought they turned Bray Wyatt face. Like the crowd was behind him now. He was getting cheered. He's not getting booed anymore. But then you just turned Randy Orton on Bray Wyatt, but now people are cheering Randy Orton. I think Randy Orton's always been the face. I think it's gonna be a face versus face. I think there's, and that's a good way. I think it's good because that just makes the match even better. There, I think, I think a face versus face. I don't think would be Bray good. Wyatt. But these is a guys face. are the way to do it. They're both tweeners. Uh, yeah, okay. I feel like Bray Wyatt's more of a tweener. R- yeah. Orton's more of the face now, the more edgier face. I'm I'm gonna be I'm interested to see what happens though, like going along now, the rest of the storyline and who plays we up to the we crowd. We didn't see more. Luke Harper this week. No, that's the, what the hell's going on with him? There was all this talks about him going into the making a triple threat main event, but then I'm hearing that Vince says he doesn't want him in there and. If he doesn't want him in there, we already know that it's not going to happen. If Vince doesn't want it, it's not going to happen because so, he's running WrestleMania. It's not happening. Are they putting Harper in the Andre the Giant? Probably. Yeah, it's probably going to be a stare down with Harper and Strowman, you know, some gay like that. Uh, <laughs> Kerr Hawkins is in the ring here talking oh about how God. Ambrose, what Ambrose did to him last week and calls out Ambrose. Okay. The Hawkins, facts don't <laughs> lie. Yeah. Har- oh, God, I hate when he said that. I'm, I'm starting to hate him now. I know I was so hyped behind him, but he's just useless now. I'm not using him properly, so I don't care anymore. Uh, Greg says my glorious debut is coming soon. Okay, I'm Lena. <laughs> Hawkins charges him on the ramp as Ambrose was coming out, and it just gets clotheslined. <laughs> Ambrose then gets in the ring, grabs Mike, and he wanted to call Baron Corbin out, but he's back there doing his lone wolf thing because everyone thinks he's a scumbag, and coming from him is saying a lot. And he's more like the neutered wolf than the lone wolf because he's got no testicles. Oh, I like this promo by Ambrose. Uh, Corbin gets on the Jumbotron and says that he don't come to the ring when someone calls him out. And is why he's – and I don't know why that Ambrose is such in a rush to get the beating he's going to get. He says he's going to take everything from Ambrose including that title. Ambrose get, uh, says, hey, if you're not going to come to me, I'll come to you. Gets out of the ring, and then he's about to get jumped by Hawkins again and just dirty deeds him on the floor. And then just leaves. <laughs> I love this new Ambrose. Man. This is Ambrose that he needs to continue to do throughout his career. If he's being made to be the next kind of Stone Cold character, this is just too perfect. This is, he's doing everything right to be that kind of <laughs> character. He doesn't care. Just yeah. comes in, hits people, leaves. Just so nonchalant and everything. and just He, he, he does it right. That's what Stone Cold did. came in, Stone Cold, or stunned Stun, and leave. Yep. So and it was a good uh, segment with Corbin too backstage. Yeah. I thought he did a good job yeah, too. He he's getting really well. He's improving on the mic like very very well. Um, so I, I yeah, there's a big future in Barry Corbin, uh, and it's great because I'm a Barry Corbin fan. So it just makes my life even better. Uh, I got a note here. Tom, uh, they did this. You know how they do the whole commentary plug, or whatever it is, like Black History Month or whatever. So it's Women's History Month this month, and they had Tom Phillips do it. Huh. Was that really smart, though, to be – did you not think that, you know, 95% of the non-casual fans – which, okay, get this right. Don't to be – sorry, I'll, I'll recorrect it. Don't to be is made up of 10% casual and 90% internet fans. You didn't think that the 90% of the people would think that why the hell is Tom Phillips doing stuff on women's history? Because all of Twitter, 
was just oh, losing it because Tom Phillips was doing the Women's History Month. Because of all the rumors that have gone on with him, I think they could, probably could have done something better. Like, Ronaldo, heaven forbid your head announcer, Ronaldo does this. I think they wanted Tom Phillips to feel awkward. Oh, maybe it was punishment. punishment. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we got backstage with Mojo Raleigh. He announces he is in the Memorial, ba- the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck about Mojo Raleigh. I can't. Besides uh, him drinking 18 Red Bulls, I think I don't there's care. probably a method behind this. He could be, he could be a winner. I think uh, he, he's definitely, uh, he's gonna be up there in the Vegas odds. I'm telling you right now. Uh, depending if they put Joe in there, so we'll see. Uh, Mojo announces he's in the Memorial Battle Royal. Ziggler confronts him and says, "You guys, you gotta earn your moment." Mojo says, oh, Ziggler, is that why you don't have one? Ooh. And then Ziggler says, don't go reaching for those brass rings. I'll get them for you. <laughs> okay, I love the, the the heat between Ziggler and Raleigh here. That was pretty good. Um, Greg says he feels like Vince doesn't want Ronaldo to call the big matches. I don't know why. He's probably their best announcer right now. Oh no, Michael Cole. He, he's he's, good he's, too, re- he's too good at calling yeah. wrestling matches. That's why Vince, Vince hates like anyone that's too good. Uh, backstage, Ambrose is looking for Corbin. Uh, ends up g- going around a corner of the, the the arena here, and Corbin throws a security guard into Ambrose as a distraction, and then leads to lead piping Ambrose behind the legs and into the stomach. Uh, then it puts Ambrose underneath a forklift and lowers the forklift onto Ambrose, pressing him to the ground. Holy crap, man! I can't wait for this WrestleMania match. This is actually going to be unreal. It's better. It's a better no holds barred feud than we got last year. It's a, yeah, because it's better we hardly saw Lesnar last year, and then we all we had were promo videos of Ambrose going to Legends and getting weapons, and then he hardly used any of those weapons at WrestleMania. So, it's a, it's a better build up, way better because both these guys are intense. They both have the same intensity. Lesnar just did not care, and they both you know if I can quote, they both have the ruthless aggression to need that they that you need to build a good feud and to have a t- certain feud like that. Yeah. So, I feel like these guys have perfect chemistry like yeah. with the way that they both are. I think it's going to be a really good match, Russell, man. I can't wait for that. Uh, next, we get the Blisseration. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you were excited at first until you saw what happened at the end. Uh, Alexa gets in the ring. She points the WrestleMania sign. C- can we not have an episode of Raw or SmackDown? we not have an angle where someone points the sign? There's the camera angle. <laughs> they like, got to show it. You know, they bring it there. They got to show oh it Oh, my once. God, man. Just... Alexa talking about who is going to face her at WrestleMania for the title. Uh, she calls out Becky Lynch. She ripped apart everybody, first yeah. of all. Yeah, she called, uh, you know, she just ripped, started ripping on everyone, uh, saying that uh, uh, Naomi is uh, feeling, feeling the, the owl. owl. She calls <laughs> Becky Lynch a Chucky doll. And no matter how many times Alexa gets rid of her, she always comes back. So that's a Chucky reference right there. Becky comes out, tells Alexa to shut her face first. And she's going to declare a declaration. What is with these stupid oh names? <laughs> Beckleration. <laughs> Blizzeration. Oh, my God. I'm done it's with that. Stop. Says she will be the one to take the title off Alexa. And then points to Russ. Rest- okay, Don, we get it, man. WrestleMania is around the corner. Everyone wants to go to WrestleMania. We get it, man. Stop making people point to WrestleMania sign already. I'm, I've had enough of this shit, man. <laughs> what are we, 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 we stupid? We don't know that WrestleMania is like in three weeks? Why do they all have to point the sign for? Just say it. You don't have to point the sign. Just say it. Anyways, Natty comes out and calls uh, God. Becky a beaker from the Muppets. She got called Beaker and Chucky. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> she's getting ripped apart. Says Becky is not championship material and in uh, Natty's and Alexa's, uh, I guess they're not in their class or whatever she said. Uh, Alexa asks. Oh, this is great. Oh, God. Alexa asks Natty, <laughs> uh, did she take some catnip for some reason and won't get her title shot either? She says that Natty is the worst there is, the worst there was, and the worst there ever will be. Oh my god. Fantastic what a trip, savage. I love great. her. Yeah. I love her. She's so uh, good. Mickey James gets on the mic, says that Alexa will announce well, everyone needs to calm down and give the respect to Alexa because she will announce who it will be, and it will be Mickey James. And classic Alexa blissed off look, just yeah. like all confused. Oh and then, my god, this is great. And, and Mickey's like, I thought we had a deal. And I thought that was going to go down. And there's a lot of confusion here. And it kind of felt like they were kind of buying time. And then they finally Dana Bryan's music. I'm like, oh, my God, finally. Because I don't know what the hell was going on. It just it, You could see it slowly, like, opening to cringeworthy. Because they just – they almost looked like no one knew what to say anymore. And they kept repeating the same shit. Might as well have cringeworth out there. 
Uh, Dana Bryan comes out to address the situation and then books Alexis uh, title match and says she will face every available woman on this SmackDown roster. Great. We get another oh open my God. challenge. What does that even mean? Is it like a battle royal? Is it a gauntlet match? Like, what the hell are we going to see? Like, no. we had no clarification. Obviously, Naomi's probably going to make an... Uh... Return in I that. think it's gonna be a gauntlet. I honestly think in gauntlet match, like Alexa starts in the in the ring one on one, and she's just gonna go through the division until she gets to the last person. And it's gonna be Naomi, and it's gonna Great. be one on one. At least th- there's potential of one on one situation here. So if I it's guess, a gauntlet, if it's just match, a cluster fuck match, and if it's like a battle royal, then I don't care. I do not care. That's it could be so pre-show. bad for the women, yeah. the SmackDown women's division because they built it up so well. That they don't need to have like a cluster. And you know what it sounds like? It sounds like Vince jabbing at SmackDown because they're so good. He wants to make something. They have been the way better division than Raw. They should be having a one-on-one match. They should. And in honor of Teddy Longo in the Hall of Fame, he books a tag team match. Great. Alexa Bliss and Mickey versus Becky. This match was awful. This match was awful. Yeah, I didn't care for it. Randomly near the end, Natty gets in. Gets in the ring and German suplexes Becky and walks away. Walks to the back. And Mickey goes for the cover. But and then Alexa, Alexa tags, tags her herself in. And then pins and gets the pin off that German suplex. So Becky lost. So that just made Becky look bad because she lost to a German suplex? That wasn't even Natty's finishing move. Whatever. Is she that knocked out? <laughs> There's the Schuston. But then uh, Alexa and is holding Mickey's hand up in the middle of the ring in celebration. Mickey's just looking more confused. And then BAM! Mick kick to the back of Alexa's wow. head. What I was a turn. not expecting that. I think it was going to be this early, man. What a turn. And another reason why, even though it was a little bit of cluster, SmackDown Women's Division just outbeats Raw in every way possible. They know when to turn somebody, yeah. and they do it. Yeah. Uh, Mid event time, AJ Styles and Randy Orton. I'm like, wow, they're giving a lot of time. This match almost got it's like 25 a half an minutes, hour. man. It was it was close. Winner faces Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, so it looks like Luke Harper is nowhere to be found, and it'll be one on one. Commentators kept saying that this was a dream match in the making. I never thought – did I honestly want to see Randy Orton versus Styles like last year or like years from now or years before this when Styles wasn't in WWE? I never thought like, oh, you know not be a good dream match? Randy Orton versus Styles. No one thought that. This is not a dream match in the making. This is just the first time ever. They could have left it at that. They, they, they said dream match in the making three times throughout this match. It was not a dream match. It's just the first time ever. Although it was a good match. It was. Really, really good match. Um, they got a lot of spots in. Unreal ending to this match. Styles faked a phenomenal forearm and then made Rainier go for the RKO and land on his back. And then <laughs> Styles is like laughing. And then he's about to, he goes for the 450 splash but misses it. And Orton turns him around, throws him up in the air, and then RKO out of nowhere for the win. Holy shit, man. This match was like pay-per-view quality. It was so good. It would have been the main event on Fast. And Orton one. winning clean was shocking. Well, I honestly he, thought he's there was a Royal Rumble something. winner. I thought something was going to happen. Maybe Shane was going to be out there for some reason. I don't know. Some, I thought or something was going to happen. Or Bray. But no, it was a clean win by Randy Orton. Really clean win. Um, the only question is, and I said this earlier, who's the face and who's the heel? We'll see what happens in the upcoming weeks. So who becomes the you know face in this situation? It looks like it's going to be Randy Orton. Uh, looks like it. And, oh, and at the end... After this is all said and done, we end the show with Orton pointing at the WrestleMania sign. <laughs> because Bugs Bunny back there can't get enough of people pointing at that goddamn sign. <laughs> uh, it was also shown after this on WWE's YouTube account that Styles was walking through the curtain through the gorilla position. And all the people, the SmackDown writers and producers, no Dunn wasn't back there. Or, or uh, congratulating and good work on a show. And Styles is getting pissed off about what just happened. Gets in Shane's face. And it looks like they're actually going through with this too. Getting Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles. Great. <laughs> Definitely not a Shane fan of this. came in or they started yeah. like fighting. Oh man. Road Dog said something right after it was almost done and I was dying. He said I don't know what line he said, I have to look at it after. But he said a, he said something that probably should have been said. It wasn't anything bad. It just it's like Jiminy Crickets or something like that. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Anyway, SmackDown gets a 6 out of 10 in my books this week. Low, It barely passed, but it was decent enough to beat Raw. But I'm giving it a pass just for this week. I'm giving it oh, a... Oh, yeah, Greg's like, why? Uh, Michael Cole was back there. I don't know why the hell Michael Cole was back there. Yeah, that, the face Michael Cole made. Yeah, I made a picture, a picture of it. Go check it out on our Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. I made a pretty cool collage of that. I'm um, giving SmackDown a 5. 5? Five? 5. Okay. Uh, 
my worst rating of SmackDown probably in three months. It was okay. It was average. It gets a pass. It was. It was. Uh, and it, again, it was a weak episode. They have such a good show every week that I don't care that they have an off week here or there. Yeah. And that's it. So good for SmackDown. Shitty for Raw as always. And we'll move on to the next segment of the show, and that's the list of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of 10, that awesome theme song that I made for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the list of 10 is a segment where me and myself, or myself and Corporate Copy here have a five moments each for, throughout the week. We get a rating of a 10, or we give it a rating of a list. Moment does it make the list. And we got a few. We got, each, got some good ones. Got five each here. And we're going to go through them. We're going to start off with Cobra Cappy. The origin of species match that JBL <laughs> called the Elves Worthless and Carmella versus Nikki Bella and John the Cena. The origin of species. Oh, my God. He kept saying it's an animal versus a human being in this match. Like, he just... Oh. You, know, you don't give that a 10? No, this was, a, this was definitely a list moment because the match... Was horrific. Everything that happened in this match, I know you're gonna talk about one spot, but this match sucked. I hated Ellsworth in it. I thought it was pointless. They made Carmella look so bad, and for that, you know what? You just made the list. <laughs> I I can't get behind oh, this Ellsworth man. and Carmella thing. I, it's, it's just it's horrible. Oh, JBL though, that was priceless. Uh, my first moment is a list moment, and that goes to <laughs> Craig's like Origin of Species match. What the hell? Uh. My first moment, list moment, goes to WWE Fastlane. Most likely the worst pay-per-view of 2017, or for all time, for that matter. Just terrible. Cruiserweight's basically salvage of what was left of this so-called event. Just terrible, pathetic, lazy, typical booking by WWE, and I'm not surprised it was a raw pay-per-view. And for that, WWE Fastlane... You know what? You just made the list! Yes. Worst pay-per-view of all time. I can't. I gotta put it up there. It's up there. Speaking of the list of ten, my first ten moment goes to the Friends of Jericho. Cheer me on, man! <laughs> Face turned by Chris Jericho official. I mean, the guy's so over, and I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a shame that he's leaving after WrestleMania to go oh, tour with Fozzie. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to think about what's going to happen to Raw when Jericho's gone, because nothing's going to entertain me anymore. Right. Um, so for the Jericho face turn, it gets a 10. I give it a 10. But just hopefully he continues with the whole list thing. I don't want him to go ultra baby face. I want him to stay the Jericho he is now yeah. and be that goon, but still be a face. Yeah. Don't come back and be all silent like you did that one year. That was weird. <laughs> uh, my next moment is the double knuckle shuffle by John Cena oh and Nikki God. Bella in the cringe worth in Carmella match. <laughs> Uh, it was followed by a double STF. Do I need to say more about this? It was just cringe. That's typical it. It cringe. couples match with Cena yeah. and Nikki. And Yay! It was a typical Cena and Nikki move, like on on the turtle. And, and they the... even it looked like they screwed up, like the running on the ropes thing, because Nikki kind of went too fast and went the wrong way. Uh, thank you, Miz, for destroying John Cena after this and uh, salvaging of what was a cringe-worthy match with cringe worth. <laughs> and for that, John Cena and Nikki Bella. You know what? You just made the list. God. And a turtle without a shell. And turtle without a shell. My next list moment goes to, sadly, the Blissertation, Aww. or whatever the hell you want to call it, and the SmackDown Women's Open Title Match at WrestleMania yeah. get an F grade. F grade? An Ooh. F. It gets a complete F. That was garbage clusterfuck. Does not make sense to have every woman in the match. It feels like that match they had last year where they put those women in like the tag, the total divas versus the. Yeah. Oh my god. It feels god. like that for a title. It, it, it shouldn't be like that. The oh. women on SmackDown have done too well to deserve that. They should be put in a one-on-one -on -one match, and for that, the Blissertation and the SmackDown Women's Open Title Match. You know what? You just made the list. Hundred percent. And it's sad to say because I, I love Alexa Bliss and I love all the women on SmackDown what they're doing. And I, I feel like a SmackDown Women's title it, it means more than it the Raw Women's title. Like it, it literally is over. The, the, I agree with me. Agree with us if you, if you do, ladies and gentlemen, or not. 
the Raw, or I think this, we think the SmackDown Women's title is more prestigious than the Raw one right now. And it's sad because it originally started with the Raw one. Just saying, Alexa's made that happen, but yeah. I'm not going well, go to gonna. I'm not going to disagree. Um, my next moment is a 10 moment, and that goes to the opening of Raw. Yes, for once we get a decent opening of Raw. We don't open with No Man Games or Oldberg or any part-timer or anything we don't need to see on TV. Is the only thing that was good on Monday Night Raw. Although I don't agree with the booking of what is happening through Raw with the so-called, if you call them feuds, Oldberg and Lesnar, whatever, Reigns and Taker, we all know how I feel about it. We just, whatever. I need a 10 moment, so I'm giving my 10 moment to the opening of Raw, and for that I can say perfect. 10. So yeah. I'm giving my last 10 moment to the Cruiserweights this week. Oh. Ooh, uh, to the now, the especially weights. to the king of the cruiserweights. There you go. Especially to him, and even for T.J. Perkins against Shinsuke on uh, NXT. Oh my God! I rewatched that match this morning. Unreal. That was the only thing I didn't get to watch all of NXT. I only went to go and see this match. Wow. So yeah, the cruiserweights were great this week. From Fastlane was the only good thing at Fastlane. On Raw, they actually got a good 15-minute match between Rich Swan and Neville for the title. 205 Live was good, and they had Perkins against Nakamura. What more can I say? The cruiserweights are finally. They're finally, the leash can be let loose on them a little bit, and I think they're realizing that how good these guys can actually be. And maybe against uh, like, main event, right, main roster people looking knock more. Like that was a great match. I'm like, he can he can keep up. It's too bad that they won't put the cruiserweights in the main event ever because yeah. they're not the, the big draw like yeah. Lesnar and Oldberg. But yeah, uh, for that, Vince uh, Vincent K. McMahon. But this week, the cruiserweights and especially Neville will get a. Oh, what's one sec? Gets a perfect. Ten. Accidentally double clicked there. Botchmania. Sorry, it, gets, it gets two tens. Two tens. Gets two tens. You know, I I give it two tens. We gave it two tens. Yeah, you had two good matches. I can appreciate two tens. Um, now next moment, the terrible booking of the SmackDown, or sorry, the Raw women's division. The terrible booking around Raw. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore, man. I honestly, I thought something was gonna be salvaged out of this week. No, we get the same shit. We had the tease of the one-on-one match between Bailey and Sasha, which that should be the match at WrestleMania, to be honest. I feel like they're saving they that should for should have. I know. This, this, but I thought this... Remember, like, a half a year ago, we were saying that this could be... This was probably going to be the WrestleMania match. And it should be. They're saving it for the rematch of Brooklyn. Hopefully. But I just... I'm, I'm sick and tired of the terrible, lazy booking. And Dana... Dana and for one thing, Dana Bosch needs to get off. And by um, the way, what where was Nia Jax this week? And Nia Jax. I didn't include that here, but yes, agree. Nia Jax, she was irrelevant. I thought she was supposed to be putting herself into this. And she was just... I guess they changed her mind. Maybe we're only going to get a triple threat. Who knows? I don't know. It's just too. I feel they should have done one on one. There's too many multi-person matches this year at WrestleMania, and for that Raw, the women's division and everything booking towards it. You know what? You just made the list. I just can't stand it. I've got my last list moment, and the frequent nominee Go on ahead. you just made the list. Roman Reigns. Yeah, Greg's favorite. No man game. Burying Braun Strowman's dominant, undefeated push at Fastlane just absolutely killed it. And for foreshadowing the burial of The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Oh, God. Uh, Unbelievable. I, I'm Roman just killed two people in one night. In, I feel in like two Roman nights. should get buried alive, please. So we can we need a Roman buried me. alive match. Hope so. So, Roman Reigns, every week. congratulations. <laughs> every week, you just continue. You know what? You just made the list. <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns matches are bury alive matches every week, by the way. <laughs> Everyone he faces is a buried alive match because he gets buried by Roman. My last moment. It's a list moment again. So I have a lot of list. I had mostly list moments this week. Just fire McFoley already. Seriously, get it's getting annoying now. They're, they have the same fucking arguments every single week, just in about something different. It doesn't look like it's it's, it's escalating at all. It's at the same pace. It just needs to end. It's just dragging out way too long. And I don't feel like they're... Mick Foley has the GM power. Like, they're not giving him the storyline and the script to be a good GM. It's kind of, like, not fair. But I think they're only doing it because of the hip surgery. But unfortunately, Mick Foley, for you being stuck into this cringeworthy thing with Stephen McMahon... You know what? You just made the list! Yes. Every time Steph talks, it's just... Ugh. It's kind of cringe. Like, it's getting annoying, uh, man. We got to give an honorable mention to Miz this week on Talking Smack. Oh, my God. He gets an honorable 10. I'm just going to give him a 10 right off the bat here. 10. Yeah, Miz, you get a perfect 10. My God. 
between uh, SmackDown and Talking Smack. He, they're actually getting me excited for this match. He is so he's becoming more and more like an underrated star. He's probably I, one of the best heels they like, have on the company. Someone I pointed on SmackDown this week, or on, on sorry SmackDown on Twitter. It was during SmackDown that they feel that instead of Roman Reigns, they should be pushing Miz. He feels that Miz, although Miz is not the the body type that Vince likes. He's got the mic skills and the persona to be a top person in the WWE. I think he's a, he's top heel on the mic. Yeah, mic where any of the ring in ring technician. I know you can't keep up with the big guys. Yeah, but, he's, but he, he's solid. He's safe. He doesn't do anything reckless. He's literally a solid. I, I, I don't take this in any disrespect. He's a solid number two heel in the company. He he's definitely underrated, and I kind of feel bad he's getting put in this kind of match. SmackDown's revitalized his career the last year, though. Yeah, I mean, and, he's done he's done a yeah. fantastic job, and it actually he's actually given me thought that he, he could actually go against Cena and actually have a shot. That'd be interesting. I and we, we you can go back and look at their I know it wasn't that great, but the WrestleMania 27 match, which was interrupted Cena, by The Rock. Yeah, but um, but that was that's, they didn't get the the room to do anything because literally the main focus of that was Rock coming out at the end. Yeah, so Miz basically got buried in the whole thing, and he won the title. He like he, he retained the title. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to do our last segment of the show, and that is WWE Headlines. Hit that headline music. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, a part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. And we have five. I have five. Uh, Three before, ain't enough. I need five. Th- oh my god, okay, Biggie. News. We got a we got a late tweet here from Jor- at Jordan Spear too. Oh okay. Not much time to watch Raw or SmackDown. Raw gets dumpster fire out of ten. <laughs> SmackDown god. was decent, seven out of ten. But Orton Styles was great. Good. Thank you for your tweet. We appreciate it, Jordan Spear. Nine minutes Great ago, opinion, so. and I definitely agree with you. So thank you for that. And sorry we didn't get your tweet in your time. We're already on the air by the time you sent it to us. And we'll hopefully get your tweets in next week on time. If you can send them on time. Uh, headline news. Right off the bat, NXT. Orlando, the NXT TakeOver Orlando picture is shaping up to be a great card so far. As this week we got announced that Asuka, the undefeated Asuka, will face the undefeated Amber Moon in a one-on-one match for the NXT title. It's going to oh, be huge. That's going to be an insane match. I cannot wait for TakeOver Orlando already, man. Just I wish we were just going to that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Return this week as well, and Regal booked the match with Bobby Roode facing Cassius Ono God. for the NXT title, and the winner will go on to take over Orlando to face Nakamura for that. And we know it's going to be Bobby Roode. It's not going to be Ono is not winning the NXT title next week. Everyone be real here. That would be the worst match of all time. I don't know why people are getting hype over Chris Hero slash Cassius Ono, man. I mean, look at the guy. NXT. He's oh still out of shape. Yeah, still, Remember, Unbelievable. We, saw, we saw him uh, back when I saw Rhino and Mickey James in that uh, House of Hardcore event. And he was out of shape then, too. I don't care about Cassius Ono. Oh, yeah. no, get off my TV yeah, when I see him. Please. But oh, I, no didn't, e- I didn't even know that Nakamura was going to be put back in the NXT title match. So. Yeah, I thought that it was a Styles thing, but I guess not. But whatever, I'm still good. fine with him. I'm good uh, with it, the rematch. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he won't win. Maybe Bobby retains and then Nakamura de- – I think the w- the loser of that match – it's going to be Rude and Nakamura. The loser of that match debuts on the Monday night uh, after WrestleMania. It's probably going to be Nakamura or he might go to SmackDown. Or might SmackDown. Know. Or maybe both. Maybe no. Rude debuts on Raw with the NXT title. Who knows? Um, Alistair Black, you guys don't know, is a.k.a. Tommy End. If you don't know who Tommy End is, this guy is definitely going to be a top star at NXT. I did a background on this guy. Uh, style of wrestling to compare to is CM Punk. That's basically what he surrounds his uh, his style of wrestling to and compares it to. He basically looks like CM Punk. But, I think you were uh, telling me about this He's guy bigger. a while ago. Yeah. I have. He, man, he looks promising as hell. That was a huge signing when WWE signed him. He's going to be a future star. They... Triple H loves him, and he loves the big indie guys. They're going to groom him into a top star in NXT. So we got the debut vignette of him this week. So he'll probably debut sometime after TakeOver Orlando or maybe at TakeOver Orlando. So we'll see. Um, next bit of news. Late changes to the Raw Women's title match at Fastlane. Bailey handed Charlotte her first loss on pay-per-view this past Sunday at WWE Fastlane to return the Raw Women's Championship. Retain, sorry. As was the case, Bailey's title victory on Raw last month, Sasha Banks played a pivotal role in the result. She dr- distracted Charlotte on the outside, which allowed Bailey to hit the belly to belly suplex for the win. There was a late change this past Sunday at Fastlane to the match, as WWE originally planned for Banks to accidentally cost Bailey the Raw Women's Championship. 
That would have made more sense. This would have led to the, the, the uh, dissension between the two friends heading into WrestleMania. I would have liked that better than what they did. Yep. I, I, I don't know why they scrapped this and went with what they went with. Because it just made Charlotte look bad. You just Why wouldn't her pay-per-view streak end at WrestleMania? Why Fastlane? Didn't make any sense. Zero. It's garbage. Garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage booking again. A year's worth of undefeated pay-per-views. More yeah. than that. Next bit of news. Dana Bryan to wrestle again. Question mark, question mark, question mark. As previously noted on the site, this week's episode of Derby, uh, Derby sorry, Derby's website, this week's episode of Talking Smack, Dana O'Brien hinted at wrestling again on his con- when his contract expires in a year and a half. Brian's exact words to the response to Miz talking about Brian not being to wrestle were, we'll see in 18 months' time, won't we? Dave Meltzer noted in the Wrestling Observer newsletter that one of Brian's bucket list goals is to wrestle for CMLL in Mexico and do a hair versus mask match on the anniversary show. One would assume that that would also want to work with he would also want to work with New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, PWG, and some of the UK promotions. Since Brian is on TV every week, his deal is not frozen like Mysterio's deal was before he ultimately was granted his release. By the time he is free and clear from the WWE, he will be 37 years old. He turns 36 in May of this year. He'll be able to commend top dollar from independent companies and could potentially take more money that is currently making than in WWE while working for his own desired schedule. I think Dan Bryan leaves the company in a year and a half. I think he knows he wants to wrestle again. I think he leaves. A year and a half, bye-bye Dan Bryan. And when he's done his thing, he'll get back on a Legends contract. Who knows? We'll get put in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that stuff. So good for him. I, I, I'm actually okay with that. I don't don't be. I don't want to hear whiners out there complain about it. And let the guy do what he... I think people can get behind this. If man. he wants to wrestle again, let him wrestle yeah. again. WWE doesn't want to... Uh, Risk it. Yeah, they don't want to uh, clear him, but... And, and I can actually understand where WWE is coming from, too, in a sense. Look at what happened to some of their top guys. Edge, look what's happened to him. Christian, like, to name a few, man. It just, it, it sucks. And WWE doesn't want to take that risk, and I commend him for that. Next bit of news, Matt Hardy. And going into the WWE. Okay, so TMZ Sports caught up with Matt Hardy. Broken Matt Hardy, who was in character here. Uh, this, qu- the question, the first question they asked was... Uh, possible WWE talks. Hardy implement or immediately plugged Friday's Friday night's Ring of Honor uh, 15th anniversary show that airs on pay per view from Las Vegas. They also re- uh, asked him regarding his appearance in Orlando WrestleMania weekend. Hardy said, "Anything is possible. Anything." Hardy was specifically or uh, was specifically asked if he had conversations with WWE. He replied, "I had no com- <laughs> I have had conversations with every promoter that runs major wrestling organizations across the world." He added that he and his brother Jeff are currently signed to the biggest contract in Ring of Honor history, bigger than the Young Bucks. He added that Mick Mahon, if you ever try anything shady on my broken brilliance, I'll be the first man to delete you. <laughs> Great. I, uh, I lo- Man, if you guys haven't seen, go look up the TMZ video. This is probably the best interview I've ever seen. And he's in character. It was just so good. And I really hope Broken Matt Hardy comes to WWE. He's, he's trademarking. He, he's trying to trademark his name right now uh, for the Broken Matt Hardy name. So if he does eventually come to WWE, I would, uh, I would be all over that, man. I'd get a Broken Matt Hardy t-shirt, whatever. Um, <laughs> but it, it'll be nice, especially if he's in a feud with Bray Wyatt. Like, oh, take my man. money. Yeah, just take, just take it all right. But no, I think no brother Nero, please. And God. people are, are saying, oh, he's not going to because he signed a Ring of Honor. He said it r- clear as day. He signed the biggest contract. Relax, guys. He said he signed a contract, but he didn't say for how long. I think this contract is yeah. probably, and, and it's assumed by our boy JD, he thinks it's only till uh, April 1st, which is the Ring of Honor event. Right? Yep. So Greg says he wants uh, Daniel Bryan versus Omega match in the Indies. Holy wow. crap, man. Can you imagine he goes to New Japan, faces Omega? Or Okada. <laughs> or Okada. <laughs> Jesus, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, last bit of news, a Shelton Benjamin update. Shelton Benjamin, as you know, he was all set to return after the WWE draft began last year, but unfortunately during a routine medical checkup, the doctors discovered a torn rotator cuff. And he required surgery. It would keep him out of action for quite some time. However, things are looking up. There ain't no stopping, Shelton Benjamin, as he recently posted. <laughs> His doctor advice... From his doctor's advice on Twitter, they told him that if he can bench 300 pounds by April, then he could return. Glorious Greg also said that uh, he would also join the Bullet Club, Daniel Bryan. That'd be crazy. Uh, Yeah, so he tweeted that his doc, uh, 
Yeah, so uh, Sean Mann said, my doc said, bench 300 pounds by April. You have any hope of being released to perform? I said, is that all? <laughs> wow, Shelton taking on the challenge. Yep, I love it. I'm excited, man. Shelton Benjamin is going to bring so much to SmackDown. We know he's drafted by SmackDown, so. Such a good mid-card talent. I can't wait. To... Man, he could be pushed for main card, man. Who knows Maybe. what SmackDown wants to do with him, but I'm so pumped for Shelton Benjamin, man. So pumped. The guy's one of the best pure athletes that the yeah. company has ever had. And at his age, he can still perform. If you guys go back and look at uh, his indie wrestling matches from last he can year, still go. he can still go. It's like he never missed a beat. He's great, man. Still in phenomenal shape. Maybe he great. can. Maybe he can do something. Maybe him and American Alpha could yeah, be a faction. Maybe he'd be like the, a role model to them yeah. or something or something like that. I don't know. It'd be something cool. And maybe they bring back Charlie Haas for a couple of appearances. Who knows? Maybe. maybe they have like a gimmick match. Charlie Haas and Sean Benjamin faced American Alpha. I would love that match. That's insane. one of my dream matches to see. Yeah. That'd be crazy to see. So, um, I've got one piece of news here that I just came across my Twitter news feed. Oh. The new edition of Pro Il- Pro Wrestling Illustrated come out, came out, or that is coming out in June. Oh. And look who's on the cover. In June? Yep. Sasha, Sasha and, and Charlotte. Charlotte. Wow. <laughs> That's definitely a must grab for you. Definitely. Maybe scratch I just, out Charlotte. Yeah, but... I'll crop Charlotte out of it. <laughs> but apparently they both got an A-plus rating from Pro, Re- Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I don't know who... <laughs> So Honestly, I'd eight. give Alexa Bliss an A over them. Yeah, literally. I don't know who made that rating, but you know something wrong with you back there. But no, good, no. good for them, I guess. Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'll buy a copy. I mean, was it was it the one I got? Uh, was it the one AJ Styles? Is that Pro Wrestling Illustrated? Yep. Oh, so June you said? Yep. Okay, we we'll have to look out for that in June. Uh, but it might be out before that. But... It might be before that. Greg says Kurt Angle joins SmackDown Live and starts a faction with Haas and Benjamin and American Alpha. God, what a f- wow! Team Angle, like two point oh. I bet Roman got an F. <laughs> Actually, Roman, I think in the I got the December issue, and Roman had like the most improved or something. Oh my god, that's actually in sports. I don't know if it's the same thing with other sports, but in hockey, that's like that's the award you don't want to get because it means that you sucked and now you're slightly better. <laughs> Roman Reigns sucks, and he still sucks. He's not slightly. He did better. not improve. No, he did not improve. All right, that guys, that's gonna be it, I think, for the show. We got all the news it. out of the way. Again, I'm gonna do another plug, guys. The lowdown in Orlando will happen this Saturday before WrestleMania. It's gonna be our all-day podcast from 10 to 5 p.m. Tune in for that. Stay tuned and follow the Twitter channel and get your updates for that. There's a lot of stuff happening on that day, so I'm excited for that. And you fans out there are excited for that as well. All right, and that guys, that is going to wrap it up for this week. Week 48 edition of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars and No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Three of your Canadian based WWE podcasts and reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. And also during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines where we talk about any important news related to the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we're done recording, this podcast will be posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWP. And after, it'll be available on iTunes by searching The Lowdown Show, Grand Wars. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at WP and join our conversation. Have your thoughts and questions read right here on the show. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I am continuing to be joined by my co-host, the corporate Mr. Corporate himself. I'm call you the corporate boss. The blissful boss. Corporate cap. If anyone's going to WWE Live in Buffalo tomorrow, let me know. All right. That's a good good shot there. Go check him out. And he'll be with No Self Phil. He's a great uh, yeah. former co host. All right, that, guys. That's going to do it for the show. We're always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Where you said me,